just a nice little poplar tree here. It's been ravaged by fungus. But this little second growth forest. It's got lots of nice little birch trees in it. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of birch bark. I'm gonna poke around here a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can't find a little bit of chaga. Oh, right there. A little foraging tote. Have some birch bark in it from my last trip out. bag. Simple belt clip on it and a drawstring. That's uh, from the wild stuff. Can't really make the logo out very well on the patch, but look them up on Facebook. They uh, sell all kinds of nice stuff. Some foraging totes and bags and bombs and salves and cure-all remedies. I believe it's an Alberta company too, so Local. I'll keep looking for a camp spot. I wanted to camp down on that corner there, but it's just not right. Way too windy. Well, we spent the afternoon cruising some trails. These are all ATV trails, but they're frozen underneath of the snow, so I can drive down them pretty good. But came out here to test a little bit of gear out. Found a nice little spot to camp right off the side of the trail. There's even a nice little marker there in the tree. I've actually got two of these, but I just brought one. 
Figured it was all I would need. Weather's not that bad. Not expecting rain. Daytime here. It's been six degrees or so. Nighttime. Eh, minus ten at the worst, but I brought a sleeping bag this time. Guess we'll see how that works. had this for quite a while actually, over a year. Never actually used it for a tent. This is usually the, the floor in my hot tent. So. You get one pole and four stakes per half. Stakes are actually quite nice. Really thick aluminum. That was easy. Now for the one everybody's curious about, Serbian army surplus bag. Uh, 
well. Should be comfortable. Maybe. Okay, this is where we get out the knife and we start batoning small pieces. Wait, why would we do that? We just picked up all this stuff from hanging trees. There's a whole pile of crap laying on the ground here. I absolutely cannot for the life of me understand why batoning wood with a little knife is so popular and why a knife is garbage if you can't because I would not baton anything with any of my knives unless it was some kind of an emergency. That is all broken. I just picked up big pieces, smashed it against a tree, early man, caveman style. That stuff snapped off of some of the other trees around here. So, I don't know. Am I doing it wrong? Am I committing some kind of bushcraft sacrilege by not batoning little pieces of wood with a knife. Just that easy. When it's not very cold. And you have birch bark. And just like that, the world isn't a dark and scary place anymore. But that fire is only going to last about 20 minutes, so we better find some more wood. But there's quite a bit really close to camp. Even that stuff that's on the ground there, I'm betting it's still going to be dry enough that it'll get going. I've got that dead one over there that's leaning. That's poplar, but whatever, it burns. And then I've got a spruce that's dead standing, leaning up into the other tree there. So and I've got this punky old piece of birch. I can burn that if I need to, and just, there's just stuff laying everywhere here. You don't have to worry too much about firewood in a spot like this. And these are the good spots to pick, just for that reason. Five minutes, 20 minutes, an hour worth of foraging, you've got a night's worth of wood. So, but I'm starting to get thirsty. Better do something about that. <laughs> That's a 
silky gomboy. I know uh, I got asked by a few people what kind of kind of saw it was from my last video. What's gomboy? Nah, it's the Katana Boy 500. That is a very nice saw. <laughs> so is this one too. I like silky. I do not get these cheaper than anybody else. I buy them off of Amazon. I pay full price for them. If you don't believe me, look at my subscribers. I mean, I got 165. By the way, I gained 45 from that last video. So thank you, Varustalika, for pimping my video on your Facebook page. And I'll try not to disappoint. Ow! Tripod up over that fire so I can have some coffee because I'm parched. There. Easy. There's a king size fire tripod. Takes about 10 minutes to build one. Fancy tie job, eh? <laughs> okay, maybe I didn't wrap it thrice and frap it twice and all that, but really, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, you guys probably haven't seen this thing in use for a while. I should actually show you. Don't! Take two. So there's just a regular old fish mouth spreader. Uh, stretch it open a little bit. Uh, maybe a little bit more. There you go. This is a Stanley Boil and Brew French press. A Bodum or whatever people want to call it. And I added a couple of little holes to it. Oop, there's one there. There's one there. Boom. Got a perfect little bale handle. I left my paracord long from making my tripod. Pretty basic stuff. I'll just tie the paracord onto the bale handle, throw this over the fire, and yeah, I'll have some hot water in a little bit. Got our water cooking. We're smoking. Not sure way you want to look at it. Yeah. So when you make a tripod, don't uh, always cut a new piece of rope. Just pick a piece about, I don't know, 10 feet long or so. 
take the excess and just sort of wrap it up around the top to set the height on your pot. Super simple. I'm sure everybody knows that. At least I hope you know that. Yeah. Well, now you do. And yeah, you want to kind of keep your eyes on it. That fire will melt the paracord. So, if you want it a little higher, you just come up here, give her a wrap. Just like that. That's up another six inches. Now, I'm sure you're kind of getting the gist of this if you're watching my other videos, but I don't like cutting up little pieces. It makes absolutely no sense when it's all going to end in the fire anyway. So. Cut yourself nice long pieces, six feet long, ten feet long, whatever you can comfortably handle. And shove them in the fire. Just keep feeding them in. The more pieces you cut, the duller your saw gets. Or if you like to baton, the duller the blade on your knife is going to get. So, yeah. I mean, I cut little pieces when I have my wall tent out and my wood stove can only take a 20 or 22 inch long piece. But, yeah. When you're out here, come on. Common sense. The less pieces you got to cut, less chances you're going to have of hurting yourself. The less pieces you have to drag back there, the less pieces you have to split. It goes on and on and on and on. If none of that makes sense to you, okay, it takes a lot of calories to run a saw. It takes even more to run an axe. And if you're going to cut up little pieces 12 inches long to feed into that fire all night long, oh boy. Well, that's not surviving. That's just sort of wearing yourself out to look good for a camera. All right. After some careful thought when I got the sleeping bag home, I, uh, I figured that our Slavic brothers might be a little bit more cold-blooded than we are, so I decided I was going to beef this up a little bit. So what we have here is actually a very thin down quilt. 
This came from Costco. Got it several years ago, so you probably won't find it in the store anymore. If you do, good for you, but it's not thick at all. Like, <laughs> like this thing is, is wafer thin. It packs up about the size of a softball when it's in a compression sack, but I tossed that in there just to maybe give me a little bit of extra comfort. And the bag still rolls up, fits in its original strap like that, so. We just found out too that these bags are definitely not fireproof or fire resistant or spark resistant. Got another one there, got another one there. So yeah, careful with them around the fire, otherwise you're gonna have a lot of holes. Nothing that tenacious tape can't fix. Yeah. Keep waiting. Yeah, that's fat wood. And it starts right from the bottom and it goes up through about probably five or six of these blocks. There's a good sized piece of it here. That's probably eight inches by four or five inches. So I'll take that home and I'll split the fat wood out of it. And then the rest of it will just go into my fireplace. But yeah, never, uh, never turn down fat wood. Okay, oh, I'm gonna put a couple of these rounds over there by my camp so I can have a nice spot to sit down and start cooking my dinner. Okay, Swedish M40 mess kit. This one actually scooped up from Military Mart in the UK. A couple months, month, maybe a month and a half ago. I don't, know. don't remember. Anyways, I have been trying to see where this fits in to the way I do things. I mean, it's bulky, it's heavy, but it's uh, pretty handy actually. I don't not like it. I don't necessarily love it, but yeah. You get the little windscreen portion here. An alcohol stove burner goes in the bottom. Then you have the mess tin. It's actually a really nice thought out piece of kit. And don't forget about the little cup that goes with it. Came with my last little order from Rustalika. Set that aside. Oh, we've got coffee. Lots of coffee. So, here's the alcohol stove. Sorry. Here's the alcohol. Here's the alcohol stove. I mean, it's a good little kit. It's very handy. I like the, the hook that they give you so you can actually hang it over a fire. This one is uh, actually a stainless steel version. These are becoming very collectible, so. When you say collectible, it means the price was, well, it was up there. Not as much as people are paying on eBay, though. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to throw together a little bit of bannock. I'm just waiting for my hot dogs to cook on the fire. Oh, those aren't hot dogs. Those are elk tomahawk steaks. Huh. Well, looks like we're eating good tonight. A little bit of vegetable oil. Just a little. <laughs> okay. Bannock. Woodsman's secret weapon. This is bread. This is a really crappy pancake. It's dumplings. It's buns. It's a thickener for stew, 
it, it's everything. Like, if you come out to the woods and actually cook anything, make a bag of bannock. You don't have to use it, it stays for a long time, but it's handy to have it. Of course, wind's changing and now I have all the smoke from the fire. Maybe a quarter cup. So with bannock, you can make drop dumplings out of it. If you're making a pot of soup or stew out here, basically it's a carbon copy of a drop dumpling recipe with flour and baking powder. So. Um, Baking powder, flour, salt, and sometimes I'll throw in a little bit of sugar, brown sugar, if I want something that's a little sweeter. smoke is not very nice on the eyes. Uh, okay. A little bit of water. Uh -uh. Whew. Now. Grab an early man tool. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Ooh, that smoke is vicious. Now we got it roughly mixed together. Nice little biscuit like that. Ooh. Hot oil. Ah. Yeah. I just gave the elk a flip. So make sure that when you're doing this, you give it a little bit of seasoning. I don't know about you guys, but where I shoot my elk, they don't come pre-seasoned. It says garlic powder and Lowry's seasoning salt. There's only two types of spices, and this is both of them put together. <laughs> ah, sometimes I bring Montreal steak spice, but I don't know. This was just handy. Kind of a universal seasoning out here. It doesn't uh, taste better with garlic than just salt it to death. So this is about the point where somebody would bushcraft a really cool fork so they could flip that back over. But this is the real world. And we aren't master carvers masquerading as bushmen. So we'll go Asian. 
<laughs> Never underestimate chopsticks. They're probably the easiest thing in the world to bushcraft. Oh, golden brown. I know that that's too hot. We just deep frying it, so. Let's see if we can turn down the heat a little bit without spilling oil everywhere and getting third degree burns. Here. Trangia lit dinner. Elk tomahawks and bannock. But we're also gonna throw some coffee in the pot. It's definitely a skill being able to follow a spoon through the air with a camera. There's some fresh ground McDonald's roast. Ground it before I left the house. So. Well, that looks great. I'm famished, so I will get back to you guys after dinner. <laughs> oh, that's good coffee. Kind of an odd cup to get used to drinking out of. I like it though. Of course I'm holding it backwards. I wonder if that poor little cup realized that one day it was going to be in northern Canada. Northern Alberta. This is all done with my beaver craft carving kit. People always want to know on Facebook, on these bushcraft groups, what do you use for carving? And this is all I use between this and my pocket knife. Does everything you need. Comes in a nice little case. Whittle the spoon in about half an hour. I like to make them about, uh, about a thumb width or yeah, thumb size, we'll say. Yeah, just a nice little one. I don't really have a need for it, but <sighs> also it's the drone battery pack for my DJI Mavic Mini, and that's what I'm using to keep my phone charged up so I can film all this. But I've actually got second phone with me today. I normally film on this one, but the audio has been sucking on it lately, so I don't know what I should do. Maybe I'll try an external mic. We'll see.
Okay, so after action review. The sleeping bag's not bad. Figured about five to 10 degrees, you'd be okay in it, as long as you're dressed warm. Last night it only got down to about maybe six or eight degrees Celsius, so <sighs> I was comfortable. I didn't even need that down thing inside of there. It doesn't do very much, but I tried moving it around and I didn't really notice very much of a difference, so I'll probably just take that out. Uh, shelter? Eh. It's like any canvas poncho rain shelter. It's <laughs> It just works. It's old school. German army issue flecktarn pattern. I like the color. The price was really good on it. Uh, getting a little bit harder to find them now, but look around. We can probably get some. Yeah, well, I'm gonna finish up some coffee and pack up the camp and get moving, I guess. Not sure if you can see it, but there he is. Somebody should let him know that he's still in season until about January the 15th. <laughs> yeah, they blend in really well. One of the hazards of going out and overnighting in these odd spots. You never know if there's still gonna be a bridge there when you go to leave the next day. <laughs> oh boy.